You're listening to... Offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Hello, Hard Foul listeners. Welcome to the next episode of Tommy Heinsohn's Hard Foul with your host, Jim Quigley, and his helper here, Mike Quigley. We're excited to dive into the Boston Celtics, as always. It's been a fun season. Celtics had an incredible homestand. Really impressive when you take a deep look into it. Two home-and-home victories where they dominated two teams that they sucked against last year. Um, They really had a hard time beating them last year. And also beating the Knicks for the third time this season, another team last year that the Celtics really struggled against. And then there was last night where we all felt really good in the third quarter, especially like I want to say with probably two and a half minutes left in the third quarter, we felt really good about how they were playing against the team in a place that since the NBA Finals, the Celtics struggled against. And we saw a little bit of repeat history to last year when they went into Golden State feeling good at 21-5. and five. This year at 20-5 and five and starting a very difficult road trip with a very unfortunate and quite honestly common road loss that we've seen from the Celtics this season and a trend on the road that isn't great. Uh, so they will be tested uh, this next week and into Christmas on how they're going to adjust with their road woes of blowing leads and ultimately not being able to finish in the end. So a lot of things to be happy about in the short term and overall this season, but I don't want to just keep it all rosy because the road ro- woes are real. And um, maybe we'll be also looking, as Jimmy's going to talk about, um, seeing Tatum take a game off or two here because he certainly didn't look like himself driving to the basket, kind of avoiding driving to the basket, really, in this last game after his uh, unfortunate ankle injury that he talked about after the game. So, Jim, I'll, that's a, like a, a, t- a shit ton of stuff I just throw on the table, but I'll kind of hand that over to you. Yeah, I didn't hear his comments. What, what did he say? He basically said uh, when you uh, sprain your ankle, it's hard to play basketball. And that's what happened tonight. I was yeah. Was yeah, yeah, he he didn't look right, I, and um, I, I guess we can. There's a lot to dig into. There's certainly the dichotomy between the home and road splits, and you know the dominance that we've seen at home, and the impressive home stand that you mentioned uh, with wins over Cleveland and Orlando, and, and really a dominance against the top East teams. I think that 12 and three out of the 15 games they played against the top eight seeds in the East. Um, really a top heavy schedule to start the season, and, and now these challenges on the road. But you could see it with Tatum, I thought, last night. Um, after he rolled his ankle and he came back in the game, there really wasn't explosiveness. Um, I think Golden State sensed it because if you saw, they were more than willing to, you know, have Chris Paul cover him on the perimeter at times. Curry, they would mm-hmm. send help, and Tatum did a good job of reading the help. and and finding the open man, but um, there wasn't that explosion that you would see of him attacking the basket, and and then he struggled finishing, and I think that had a lot to do with his ability to get off the floor. I, I would be really surprised, you know, um, and I know he's a, he's a tough guy. He does not like to miss basketball games, but I'd be really surprised if he suits up tonight against Sacramento. Um, to me, he just did not look right. Um I don't want to say he hurt his offense because I thought he did a really good job facilitating and I thought um he Still threw a lot of help, but he was he was certainly not the same guy mm. that we're used to seeing. Um and I, I don't think that's a reason why they lost. I, I think there were other contributing factors. I think there's some trends, uh, especially with opponents three point shooting and, and your own three point shooting on the road, which is, you know, a bit troublesome and, and you know kind of some of their um, lapses on defense, particularly with their screen and roll coverage on Curry, um, where they let him kind of get free, get going and feel good. And then, you know, he was he was amazing down the stretch of that ball game. They weren't um, really covering Clay Thompson either. And just letting him shoot. No, um, Clay kind of had a really good game up until about midway through the fourth quarter. Then I thought he really kind of, um, you know, Tie it out. I guess it, yeah. it became the Curry show. 
but they were going under screens at times. They were seemed to get their coverage mixed up. I even thought at times when they were running this, you know, the two man game between Curry and Thompson, I, I still would have trapped Curry and, and just taken my chances with Thompson at that point um, because I think Curry was just that dominant um, and was certainly in a Curry zone. But there were times where, you know, and I know he's deep, but they they just didn't get out on to him. Um, like I said, where they, you know, kind of going under, you know, and and I, I they just seem to make mistakes like they made. You know, you mentioned last year's matchup against Golden State. You go back two years ago to the finals, you know, where they would they let him get free and then they gave up um, second chance opportunities to Golden State. And then when they had opportunities, they didn't convert. Look, it's yeah, they missed a lot of yeah, a lot of shots. They missed a lot of open. I mean, Sam Hauser himself went over seven. They had that one possession where they I think they had four or five looks off offensive rebounds and every single one of them was a good look late in the game. Or I mm-hmm. think the game was tied. And over time, the first four possessions were, I thought, all good possessions. Good um, score. And, and got good looks and, and didn't convert them. Um, so even that Peyton Pritchard three to put him up 18, he stepped on the baseline. Yeah, that but, was a big shift in the game. It was. It was. I, I, I think, you know, you could look at a lot of different things, a couple shots go in from out there and you know you're not going over time but that's what happens when you give up to another team 40 percent from three and you shoot under 30 percent 35 points in the fourth quarter of the game yeah and it's been a trend right and it kind of kept golden state in the game early in the game with sarich i think hit a few threes you know thompson moody kaminga they all they all contributed from out there and um Outside of Derek White, you and a little bit of Peter Pritchett, you weren't really getting much contributions from beyond the the arc at all. Um, I, and you missed a lot of bunnies. I mean, I, what did Al have three or four putbacks? So Al was offense, rushing his putbacks. It was driving me nuts. The offense wasn't the problem. I I didn't think last night. I I, I thought you know there were times when even Scal brought it up where they got stagnant. I didn't think it was that often. I think it feels that way because they had misses. Um, I thought they had a lot of good looks. I thought their defense in the defensive rebounding in the fourth quarter, where they just um, executed poorly. You like, I didn't yeah. know how else to put it. It seemed like they, there's no way the game plan was to not cover Curry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the they, other part of it too was they, like they screwed up coverages. They they stopped going to Jalen Brown. He yeah. was. They stopped going to him not just as the scorer, but as the shot creator for other people. He's been their best, probably yeah, the home stand going into this yeah. game. He's been their best player all around, right? And so he certainly was the best player through three quarters. And I feel like after him Curry, and Derek White, yeah, Derek him White. and Derek White, yeah. But White was more playing off people. I feel like where Brown was creating for himself and others. And I feel like after he got Curry into that fifth foul situation, they just stopped going to to Brown and letting him drive to the hoop. Because Golden State really didn't have a lot of resistance. No, they for, didn't. They didn't. You know, yeah. I thought that that hurt the Celtics. And the stuff you're bringing up about the missed shots and, like, the offense is not – like, they look good. They're just not executing. What's alarming to me is that it often is the story this year on the road. Yeah. Oh, we're just missing wide open shots again. We're just missing wide open shots, and now, you know, we let the other team back in, but we we ran good offense. Um, they got to figure this out because six and six on the road for this team—that's unacceptable. And, and four, 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 in a row. four in a row yeah. too that they've lost, and they—it's been a while since they've got one. And I, yeah, I, and I, 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 the offense always hasn't been. Good I, I, on the road. I, I I didn't think it was bad in this game, but it hasn't always been good. Mm-hmm. And in fact, they've been held pretty low numbers in, in a lot of these losses. Even in their last win against Memphis, I think they scored 104 points. They've yeah. gone in overtime a couple times and they've lost. Um, it, it, but the one thing that's really been consistent is the other team's three point shooting on the road. It's been well north of 40 percent or at 40 percent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you've, you haven't been close to that. And that's usually a recipe for a loss. And, and I don't, there's a certain level of focus at home. That's 
you know, really impressive that there, there is, I know Joe Mazzula said earlier in the, I don't know why we're playing that well, but Tatum kind of, you know, spilled the beams that, you know, this, this seemed to be, there was an emphasis on this. It's clearly, he said it, you know, we wanted to get back to what we were a couple of years ago when I first got here and, you know, we're, you were electric at the garden where we mm-hmm. haven't been the past couple of years. So I think there was an emphasis on who they were going to be at home, which with great teams, that's usually, you know, you look back at the really great Celtics teams, you look at the Warriors teams that never lost at home, the Bulls team. They So if you want to be that type of team, you that's where you establish yourself. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, we've it's seen not that. Bad, it, it's, it's, it's the it's the, the splits are too big. It, they shouldn't be a 500 team. They they shouldn't be perfect on the road. I don't think anyone's expecting this, but they shouldn't be a 500 team. And they've lost it. It's not like they're losing the great teams here. You know, yeah. Indiana, um, Charlotte, Charlotte. They, they these are these aren't great basketball teams. Um, you know, there's a chance that none of them make the playoffs. Um, mm-hmm like you you need to be better than that um i'll be interested to see how they come out tonight against sacramento that'll be tough jim um, this is gonna be tough this is gonna be a tough game it's a team they've historically not yeah. just beat, but beat, beat down like this has been a good matchup for them historically and I, even without tatum i would you know with Brazingis back in the lineup you would say the celtics have more talent you know yeah. He, yeah. He, so this is a game they should win Hey, I know it's a back-to-back, but you just lost. Like, how are you going to come out here um, tonight? It will be interesting. You know what's more interesting to me, Jim? It's not how they come out. It's how they finish for me tonight. Because I expect they'll do what they usually do on the road. They're going to come out and play well in the first half. Yeah. I'm, you know, how how are they going to finish this game? And I, I think my concern is probably the same level of concern for you is Sacramento can certainly shoot the three ball. They have several okay. guys that can do that. You're key and they have a can tell for them right now. Yep. And they have a point guard that um, is certainly hard to match up against, which the Celtics have struggled against Halliburton and Curry and others, Tyrese Maxey this year. So this could be the recipe for the same old Celtics on the road, but uh, hopefully they'll surprise us and they'll come out and they'll, they'll win a road game because it's a tough road trip. They're going into L.A. after this game who have won seven in a row. Uh, the Clippers, and then they end on Christmas Day. At, well, they haven't won uh, seven in a row. They lost to the next couple games ago when Brunson had 50. That was against LA Clippers? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. All right. You're positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clippers blew, blew a big lead, and yeah, Brunson had 50. Oh. And then was Either way, they, they've been playing very well. They've been playing a lot better. Yeah, yeah. You know, they've been playing a lot better. And then, you know, Christmas Day is going to have that special element to it. Yeah, no, and look, this is – it's the same old Celtics for this year because what's interesting – For this year, yeah. They, they've been, you know, they've been a better road team than a home team in a lot of aspects over the last couple of seasons. Right. So they they got to figure it out. And, you know, I, and look, I, I think part of it is the uh, last four games, I, you know, one of those was against Orlando. They haven't had Pozingas. You know, he hasn't been part of any of those four road games. Um, so that's, to ask you a question. It's not, it doesn't mean they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have lost four in a row and they shouldn't have lost last night. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Knowing where they are right now on the road, where they're playing, would you be satisfied with a two and two road trip at this point? It depends how it happens. You know, it depends how it happens. Like if mm-hmm. they come out and they win tonight and they split in LA, but the two good games in LA, you know, the, yeah, I'd be team. in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I guess it always depends how it happens. Like if they win the next two and then they lay an eight on Christmas, you're not going to feel good about a two and two. Oh, yeah, God. my only defense to that for them, and I, you know, I typically don't defend these guys, but I could see Christmas. It's like the last day of the road trip. Um, it's too big of a game. Yeah, yeah. It's too big. I, You're going against the Lakers on Christmas, and there's no excuse not to be ready to play. Yeah. yeah, especially yeah. when they have Detroit after that. So it's like you don't really even have to try against Detroit. Yeah, but <laughs> go around the league. There's a lot of interesting stories. Um, let's let's hit on the home stuff and that home stand quickly, Mike. Can I throw one crazy stat at you before you do that? Yeah. Going into the game last night, the Celtics were 12-0 win. 
Drew Holiday scored 13 points or more in a game. It was the first game this year they lost uh, when that happened. Uh, yeah. So it just it, it, for me that's interesting because it means his offense is important to this team for them to win um, going forward it, because it seems like when he contributes offensively they're a much better team when when he doesn't I believe they were five they were six and five at that point so um, yeah. I, 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 I but when he hit those free throws last night and he got to the thirteen point mark at the end of the game I was like oh they're gonna win. Um, Ultimately. I wonder what the Celtics record is though when Tatum scores 15 points or less. I'm sure. Uh, well, it's probably good. only like an example of like three games. And I'm yeah, guessing I'm it's, sure really... it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that might be the the bigger factor last night. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, uh, going back to the home stand. So if we're gonna trash them, um, and I think rightfully so for their performance on the road at home, they they've been the polar opposite. They've been. Outstanding. I'm not, I don't even remember them trailing in the fourth quarter at any point in those five games. Maybe they had. I don't think I, they did. I don't remember they did if they did or not. It uh, always got close, like kind of close in the two home and homes, but then we just would erupt and just kick their a, ass. You'd be yeah. A, yeah. 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 And that, that last game, Orlando was a great example. I know you were at the game, Mike, so I really want to hear your perspective. But you, you, I think it was a six point game. And then all of a sudden, Brown hits a three, Tatum hits a three, Brown hits a three, and it happened, I felt like, in 45 seconds. Yeah. And that was ball game. And that, that that was it. And, you know, a couple minutes later, the bench is declaring. And it felt like that was – and how I felt the biggest difference to me um, between what we saw last night in that homestand their bad quarters, so their first quarter versus Cleveland, and I thought the first – game against Orlando that first quarter and then yeah, it wasn't great the third um maybe it was a third quarter against Orlando in the game you were at I it was kind of bad shooting but the energy was never bad and the attention to team exactly. was never bad the defense mm-hmm. was always what you would want it to be they were they were fighting for every possession as Missoula said they were winning on the margins right mm-hmm. and so even like early in the game against both Orlando and Cleveland in those one game, I think it was the first time they played each. They were missing long early in the game. It almost felt like they were squeezing the ball too hard a little bit. It wasn't like they were missing short, you know. Which no, when they ended the game, that time. they would end the game with like 19 threes when they started one for 10. Yeah, I and mean, yeah, yeah. I know we'd be texting early on, and I, I frankly was never concerned about – those bad quarters because I'd sit there and watch them and be like, but they're giving it. There's an all out effort here. There's an all out attention to detail from a, t- from watching on TV. The energy seems incredible. And I, I just, that was the most impressive part for five games. They were locked in uh-huh. and, and the energy level was, was extraordinarily high from your best players to the, the last guy that came in, to Lamar Stevens, that would fill in for when, you know, they were down three bigs. They yeah, were down that, on the second night of the back-to-back. Yeah, so I don't know, you know, I know you watched the first four from your couch, but you, the last one was Sunday, a matinee game, where historically the Celtics have sucked at, three o'clock start. Um, what did you see there um, live? Well, so I thought the game was one when Missoula adjusted the coverage to Pablo, he put Drew Holiday on him after he got to 27 points in the first half. And after that, um, Pablo could not create the space that he typically creates against Holiday. And Holiday was up in him. And when he got past that first line of defense of Holiday, the defense was just more prepared to be there, where there's more length in the paint to defend him. So I thought that was a terrific adjustment by by Missoula, because Holiday was great. Just his defense was incredible in that game. Um, so that's the first thing that stood out to me. The other thing that stood out in that game is just how much it, like Hauser has improved as a player overall. I know he only had four points and he was missing his threes, but his ability to go to the basket and make shots now was something he couldn't do last year. And just seeing that live, his ball handling, passing, and just overall offensive game has really improved. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, in the end it was the Jalen Brown show, right, Jim, on Sunday. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was the Jalen Brown show, and I thought the most impressive win in that road trip though was the Friday night game. Um, you had three bigs out. You started Stevens at center. The backup center was um, 
per set. And you just were tough. You were the tougher team. That's what it was. You were just a tougher team that night. You know, they brought in Will Wagner to be dirty and Franz Wagner was playing dirty. They were playing dirty on Friday night. You didn't bitch and scream at the refs. You just kept giving it to them and kind of gave it to them all night. You know, and like you could tell that Brown was pissed off. You could tell that Brown was taking it personal, that we've had enough of Orlando. That's the message I got from those two games. It's like, we've had enough of this shit. We're going to show who who daddy is here in Boston. And uh, I had a lot of fun during that road trip. Every night, every game, going back to the next game. I, I thoroughly enjoyed every single one of those games. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like with Orlando, they're a hard playing team. That like you, you take love the way they the play. Right way. Yeah, you know, ben, Benchero is is an excellent player. Creates his own space. But I, I think the Celtics realized if we play with that type of effort and energy, our talent is just so superior that you know the cream's going to rise to the top in a forty eight minute game. And I think that's the part that's so frustrating about the performance on the road is your shot's not always going to travel. You know, you're going to have possessions like you did. And that was a great effort energy possession with a four or five offensive rebounds against Golden State and getting open looks and, you know, just not converting um, when the game was tied late. But then to lose that energy and attention to detail on the defensive glass and to lose that energy and attention to detail on your coverages with Steph Curry um is really that's frustrating as a fan it has to be frustrating on to the coach because when he talks about winning on the margins that's how you do it and if this team wins all the margins they're going to win the vast majority of the games because the talent is better than everybody else mm-hmm. and they're going to win the extreme vast majority of those games and and that should travel on the road the, the the attention to detail, your energy, your effort, that should that part you can control. And I know it's harder, you're getting off a plane, the time travel and all that stuff, but you still can control it. Um whereas you shot and sometimes turnovers and things like that, um not always completely in your control. There's a, there's another team out there that can make it difficult. But it they should be able to do that. And um I, I hope they they start to correct it on this road stand. I'm not that confident that they're going to based on what I saw last night, but yeah, you know, they'll get another shot tonight. Yeah, I think in the like uh looking forward, key to victory tonight for me is uh running the two man game and the pick and roll as much as possible with Savonis and Porzingis, whether it's Brown or Tatum plays or Derek White. I think that's who you're attacking tonight offensively. Right. And defensively, it's just about being focused and digging in. And that's my concern, is that that's the end I'm concerned about. I think offensively, they should get what they can. Um, whether they hit their shots or not on the road, we'll see in the second half. But uh, defensively, are they going to have that drive and effort and attention to detail is what I'll be looking for. Yeah, it could be a good Percet, uh Stevens game where both of those guys give you 10 to 15 minutes and you hope it's good energy, good effort, and maybe make some kind of, you know, Effort extra plays that get you going a little bit, uh, Mike. Yeah. Let's go around the league because I, I think oh, and one yeah, definitely want to one last thing, Jim. Uh, hopefully, Hauser can get off the yes. And I, he's he's yeah. list he's missed I think like fifteen straight threes, so he's Has probably he been that many? yeah. Going back to so like he went like zero for seven last night and then zero for four against Orlando, so that's eleven. And then I think he missed his last two in the game prior to that. So I think it's like 13 in a row. You just got to keep running him out there until it's done. Of course you do. Yeah, you got to get this guy going. You just got to keep running him out there. Yeah. Um, so going around the league, uh, we'll kind of make this a lightning round. Um, let's start with uh, Draymond Green. Uh, Draymond Green suspended indefinitely f- uh, for being Draymond Green, doing uh, Draymond Green dirty things. Yeah. Um, he has to go to counseling. He says he blacks out. I, you know, I'm glad the league has suspended him indefinitely. I think he's a dirty player. Like the, it's he doesn't even try to hide it. He does it right out in the open. The idea now that he's some sort of a victim of, you know, anger management issues or whatever. I mean, cut it out. Like Bill Lambert was a dirty asshole. You know, but that's he, what he but was. He was. And That's he what, told you he was. He didn't like say I have mental health issues. And this is he said I'm a dirty piece Draymond, of shit. Draymond Green's the same thing. Like, yeah, not the. But there's was, a big difference between the two. 
Yeah. Like Bill Lambert wasn't hiding behind like, oh, I got issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just yeah, like, you know, he blacks out, but yet he can go on his podcast right after the game and explain to you in detail why things happen. Like I, it's all bullshit. And yeah. he, I, he's going to come back and he'll be fine for a month and then he's going to do something again because that's who he is. And he's going to take a cheap shot, probably in a European player because that's what he seems to like to do. And um, it's, it's coming, but he's, I go back, even the NBA finals, like when that free throw, when he went out to Tatum's shoulder, that, you know, I don't know if you remember that he put his arm up. It it, It was intent to hurt. It was intent to injure. It was not a basketball play, and he wasn't blacking out. That that was calculated. It was a he calculated. Wasn't blacking out when he was kicking Stephen Adams in the nuts. No, like three games ran, in a row. Ran up to um, Gobert and choked him from behind. Like he's not yeah. blacking out. Like this is this is kind of who he is. Um, you know, I guess embrace it. I I don't know. I I don't give Lambert any credit for embracing it. I thought he was a dirty player who um, could have got people hurt but uh you know it kind of is what it is that's my two cents on training. yeah my two cents on it like how long exactly since he's suspended for he should be suspended for at least as long as john moran in my opinion yeah I mean, this guy is out of control and the yeah. league's lucky that somebody hasn't tried to beat the shit out of him we don't have another palace on our hands like that the guy's out of control jim like he tries to hurt people like he really hasn't hurt somebody yet but but the thing is, when he's like, oh, I black out, I black out, you don't black out. You're calculated in it because you go after people who you can bully. You don't yeah. go after anybody who's going to fight you back. Like, for example, when Marcus Morris, when he was on the Clippers, tried to fight you, what'd you do? He backed out like a bitch because that's somebody you could fight back. Yeah, go he's after Bobby Portis. Go after he, Bobby a, Portis. You'll see how let's see. How yeah, that. that's what I mean. Like, he doesn't, like, pull on Jalen Brown's pants down. Like oh well you can you can bully Jalen Brown because you're way bigger than him and you kick his ass like it's like somebody at some point it's gonna get ugly and the league needs to avoid that from happening Brown I don't know how credit stood right up to him right afterwards I, you know he like, did stand up to him but I'm just saying in general like he doesn't he he's a bully and like it could it could get bad like I don't know how you let this guy back like and if he comes back like it's like you do one thing you're done man like it's done. <laughs> He's not, he can't, he's, he can't be in the league. Like, and talk about a guy who had such a legacy, you know, like what his, his career has looked like if he didn't have this dirty shit, like how he would be remembered compared to like how we're going to remember too. I, just, I can't stand the guy. I, and I, when he first came into the league, I really liked him too. I really liked him, you know? So we the lightning round's going a little bit longer than the light round should. So next, Giannis Antetokounmpo, you know, scores 65 points. <laughs> what a fucking it baby. <laughs> it was a tantrum because he Give didn't. Give me my ball. Give me my ball. Some rookie on the pace has scored for the first time. And I guess historically you take that ball. That you smells ball. like bullshit too. Uh, <laughs> the whole situation. But did you see him running into the, running down the thing? Yeah. How do you not get suspended for that? Every pay, every buck that went in there should have got suspended. Like, what the hell is that about? Yeah. Every buck that went in there, including him. And I, I felt like it was like a really bad week for people that have athletes that built up a lot of goodwill. You know, the Sunday before that, it was Mahomes and Andy Reid bitching about <laughs> losing their minds over a guy being like two feet offside. <laughs> yeah. Somehow that's the official's fault, you know. Like the and whole it's like the worst team. NFL player in the NFL. Yeah, too, the biggest guy. city in the NFL. Like you, you're <laughs> yeah. defending him, and mm-hmm. then you know, and I thought that was just a complete clown show from two guys that like, have, you know, you you you, you highly respectable appreciate, appreciate the way yeah. they go about their bit job, and mm-hmm. then Giannis the same thing. Like he's built up so much goodwill around the league, and he, I lost a lot of respect for that. I, I like the way he was like. Talking down to Halliburton like it was Tyrese's Halliburton's job to get you the basketball. Like, yeah. what, what's the matter with you? I don't. I don't know what. Uh, maybe Giannis just had a bad moment because I'm a big Giannis fan. But man, that looked bad, dude. That was. He looked like a fucking baby. And his brother's <laughs> the biggest dipshit in the entire league. Like I cannot. Uh, I'm so sick of Thonis. 
Yeah. Think about it. Think about like that guy's life. Like he, he just makes a million dollars every year, just like sitting there. Well, the funniest <laughs> moment, it, it, like I got people. Should, I forget who. I think it was that game against Indiana. Like Giannis got fouled hard. And oh no! Hold me back! Like, hold me back! Go on there. Oh, and hold me back! Guys grabbed him. I wish they didn't grab him because I still think he went, went like this. <laughs> He's being held back. Yeah, hold me so back! Dude. It was like, oh god. All right, um, Indiana, uh, not Indiana, Detroit losing. Uh, I don't even know how much it was. It 24, 25, and no game is close there. They don't even feel like a real NBA team. Um, how do you not Williams, fire that coach? He, he, yeah, God. How do you not fire that coach? That team, I, I used to think that team was fun to watch. Yeah, I, did too. I used to think they played hard and they just weren't very good. I really like Kate Cunningham, yeah. Yeah, and I felt like, Similar to how I felt about Orlando, like they were building towards something. I feel like every offseason, I'd be like, oh, maybe this is the year Detroit's going to be good. They don't even play Jordan Ivey. Which is crazy, right? Which is crazy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, what the hell's going on there? Um, and Cade Cunningham is not good this year either. But he's coming off an injury, so. Yeah, but, was... yeah. Right. Monty he's Williams just... got to be fired. If you ask me, I think he needs to lose his job. He looks like a team that has just completely lost themselves. It's really it, – it doesn't even feel like tanking. It feels like – Just I, bad. I, they just can't – there's no way to figure it out. The you know, last thing, Mike, the officiating. Um, you've seen uh, Nikola Jokic get ejected twice. Um, you saw what happened with Tatum and Brown. Um you know, yeah. I know there's been others around the league. Even I thought, Chris Paul, the Chris Paul was, one was yeah. was horrible. I mean, I think at the rest Chris game, Paul's behavior, maybe that just was kind no of the the ref was talking shit to him, yeah, and enticing him. And then when Chris Paul turned around, he threw him out of the game. Yeah, yeah. And so, like speaking of babies, this year there are no bigger babies in the NBA refs, um, and this needs to stop. These Jalen Brown shouldn't have been thrown out of the game. This is crazy. Like, I don't understand what's going on with these refs. Like, they're on a power trip. Maybe they're new refs, but yeah, that's it's a bad product because of them. And they don't do a good job half the time. Like, they have, they are throwing guys out of the game, and every single time there's a green light special, we have no idea what direction it's going to go because even though it's right in front of our face and we know what's happening, we don't know what the refs going to do. No, like, no, as opposed to the game <laughs> you were at, right? The game that you were at, um, a veteran crew, if you were getting bumped, you weren't getting the call. Mm-hmm. But it stayed that way through the entire game. It was consistent. It yeah, they called yep. it, it. We weren't blowing the whistle on it. Friday night, too, actually. On a bump. Yeah. It made for a really enjoyable product. And I think players were frustrated early on. And then they figured it out. Hey, this is how they're going to call it. So we yeah. just got to keep playing this way. And it wasn't, as you see, so, happened so often in the NBA, where, where especially with the younger officials, where you have it all that way in the first half. In the second half, it's like they're overcompensating, and you have fifty foul calls, and the yeah. players have no idea, you know, how the game's being officiated at all. I thought both games against Orlando. You're right. The Friday night game too. I I, I just thought it was very yeah. well officiated from the standpoint of this is how we're calling it and it's going to be consistent physicality isn't going to get you a foul Mm -hmm. you know whether that's the letter of the law or not this Mm -hmm. is how we're going to move forward and i think everyone from the fans to the players on the floor appreciate that i don't i don't know if it's younger officials that are doing this with the t's I don't know how Jokic has already been thrown out twice this year. Um, That's crazy. Former MVP, you know, guy that people pay money to go see. I thought the Brown ejection was just absurd. You know, Kim, you know how the bad match. the ejections are. That it when they might. when they ejected Jokic, the away crowd was booing the officials. That's how bad. Yeah, it was. no, the, the guys <laughs> are, and, and you're seeing often. I know this. I think it happened with both Tatum and Brown. It's the official. Not even necessarily who the player is arguing with. Mm. It's who the official, it's the official coming in. It's like the second or third official that comes in and, and tees them up and throws them out. I, I I I think it's it's certainly a problem for the league. Um yeah. I I think they've done some good things where players aren't allowed to step. That's an automatic 
technical, if you step towards an official, if you gesture at an official, that's an automatic technical. I think that's those are all good things. I think that cleans it up. Mm -hmm. um, but when these superstars get one, the second one, it better be earned, or else you everyone's looking bad. Yeah, it, everyone is looking bad. I think the league has to look at that. You know, they ha they have to look at how the officiating is right now, and and Adam Silver, I think, has to step in and do something about that right away. Um, last thing about the league, Jim, that I think they have to take a look at. And we we hinted at this before. Um, just this uh, Josh Giddy situation. You have uh, the guy in Charlotte. They wouldn't even let him play in Toronto because of you know things he he did. Um, I think. There's just a lot happening, the stuff with Draymond Green. There has to be some sort of discussion going on with the players' union something, or something about behavior and accountability. Um, feels like there isn't a lot of accountability in the league right now for what people fuck up. Yeah, I, I, it's the Giddy one's particularly tough because you have the girl in this case that's refusing. She's not going to talk. Her family's yeah. not talking. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how you legislate that, that one. I think the the Bridges one was different because there was photographic evidence. There was mm -hmm. a victim that was willing to talk. Um, I, I thought there was a resolution in court, and maybe that's still pending. I, I don't know. Um, Wasn't there a situation with like Josh Primo last year too? It's just like it seems like a lot, you know. That they I don't know what the answer is, and I'm just bringing it up in general. It's just not a good look for the league that this I keeps happening. I think Major League Baseball is a pretty good model of how they've handled particularly violence against women and children. Um, yeah? Where, yeah? How so? What would they do? Um, let me, give me a minute. They, they changed their rules where the suspensions were longer and the, the opportunity to get oh. back into the game. I think there were classes and things like that. Um, and it all had to do with the Chapman situation. Of, Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yep. uh, um, let's see. But I'll, I'm not going to look it up now. But they they made I believe it. Yeah, there's a model out there. Um, you know, some of this is hard though too because I, I like the Milan Lucic situation here in town with the Bruins. Mm. You know, I was talking. You know, the Globe had a pretty good article. Not that I was talking. I read a Globe, Globe article about if you release him right now even though you can't really punish him because this thing hasn't been adjudicated. If you were to release him as a team, you might be actually putting his wife and kids in more risk because he's going to be angry and he's going to be looking for someone to blame. So if you can keep him employed and you can complete, have some safety measures in place, working with um, different organizations, there might be, might make more sense. It might it, when we talk about the safety of the people at home, which mm. really needs to be the priority, not how we feel as a fan or fans or community here. So it, they're really difficult situations. I think you know MLB has a good model. We talked about this on the pod before. Maybe you go out and sign a guy, you draft a guy with a background like this, and they go out and do something again. Maybe there needs to be a penalty for the team. Yeah. You know, I think that's a good idea. In that, you know, maybe you got to work that out with the players' union. I don't think you do. And, you know, you put some onus on these owners. Um, tone, tone this a little bit, you know. Patriots are a great example with Aaron Hernandez, right? There's no great example of that. They, yeah. There's a history there. They rolled the dice. They um, sure did. Maybe yeah. you need a penalty for that. You know, mm -hmm. and if you are an organization next year, Bridges is going to be a free agent, and you you see the talent, and you give him two years, twenty million dollars. Well, if he does this again, maybe you should lose a draft pick. You know, mm -hmm. and, or this is at least some sort of pain for the organizations that bring them in. Um, first time offenders, why they're on the team, but you, know, you can't blame the team. There's no way no. they would know. But if there's a history maybe that's where you're going to bring some hurt um, mm -hmm. because right now there's no risks outside of, you know, bad press. Yeah, there really isn't. There really isn't. Well, all right, Jim, I feel like this was a good pod. We got three tough games coming up on the road here. So we'll check in probably after Christmas. I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody have a uh, Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And we will connect with you after the Lakers game. Yep. Happy Annika.
Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything else.